everyone. This is Kyleen with Parents for Public Schools of Pitt County. We are so excited to do yet another school tour today uh, here over Zoom. Um, we are meeting today with lots of staff at South Central High School and you are in for a real treat. Uh, we are going to start our tour with some introductions so that you'll know who is going to be joining us today and showing us this fantastic Pitt County School. We'll start with Mr. Cannon. Tell us who you are. Hello, everyone. My name is Jannara Cannon. I'm the principal here at South Central High School. Excellent. Thanks for being with us today, Mr. Cannon. Um, we will move to Mr. Culver. Mr. Culver, if you can turn your screen on and tell us what you do there at South Central. Yes, ma'am. I am the automotive instructor. I have a very nice, clean shop, and my students learn regardless whether we're uh, virtual or whether we're face-to-face. -face. Uh, we've adapted the program to where everybody gets something out of it. We look forward to seeing more of uh, the auto body shop in just a little while. Thank you. Let's move on to uh, Mr. Varney. Mr. Varney, tell us what you do there at South Central. So I am the art teacher. We have three art teachers here at South Central, and I'm in one of our rooms, which we'll tour in a little while. Um, we teach everything from art one, two, three, and four. We have a whole AP section, and then we have uh, three separate specialized classes, like art with 3D technology, photography, and then a whole ceramics curriculum. So that's why we have so many teachers. Fantastic. I'll tell you all, when I have the privilege of being in the school and touring the schools, the art department is one of my favorite places to go on a school tour. Awesome. Um, we'll see you in just a little bit, Mr. Varney. Thanks. All right. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Jackson, tell us who you are and what you're going to be showing us later on in the tour. All right. If you Ms. Jackson, I think you are muted. So if you'll unmute, and this, y'all know, if you've watched other school tours, you know that we're all dealing with Zoom technology. So, yay. Right, Ms. Jackson, who are you and what are you going to be showing us later on? Okay. My name is Coach Jackson, and I'm one of these six physical education teachers here at South Central. And I will be talking to you about our physical education classes and showing you the big gym where everything happens. That's where the magic happens. I love it. I love it. I had no idea there were six physical education teachers there. That's incredible. Yeah. Um, let's see. Mr. Baker, we'd love to hear about what you're doing there at South Central. Hello. My name is Marty Baker. I'm one of the assistant principals here at South Central, and I will be uh, leading the tour in our cafeteria. Excellent. We all know the cafeteria is an important spot, um, so we'll look forward to seeing you in just a little bit, Mr. Baker. Awesome. Let's see, Mrs. Elks, can you tell us who you are and what you do there at South Central? Um, hi, I'm Miss Elks and I am the media coordinator, one of two media coordinators here at South Central. And I'm gonna be sharing with you about all the things we have to offer here in the media center. Wonderful, we cannot wait to see that space. If you've ever been to South Central, you know that it's such a fantastic Wonderfully just welcoming and warm spot there in the media center. That's our aim. And last but not least, we've got Mrs. Piner. Ms. Piner, tell us who you are and what fun things you do there at South Central. Hey, I'm Lauren Piner and I'm a social studies teacher here at South Central High School, as well as the school improvement chair. And I'm gonna be showing you what a normal classroom looks like and talk to you about some of our AP and elective offerings. Wonderful. Ms. Piner wears many, many hats within our school system. Before we move on with our tour, I do want to make the normal disclaimer that you may have heard me make in other school tours. Um, we are filming during COVID, so you might be watching this video years from now, but know that we are filming during COVID. Um, our schools have done a fantastic job with safety options during COVID, so if you see someone in the video not wearing a mask, then they are in a room by themselves, just like I am. Uh, I'm in a room by myself um, at an office away from South Central, um, but they are not with other people if they don't have a mask on. 
if you see them put a mask on, then someone came in the room with them and they needed to make sure to follow safety precautions. Um, and so they'll do their best to speak as clearly as possible in the video if that were to happen. But safety is the number one priority, even while we're filming. Um, let's go ahead and start with Mr. Cannon and just we're going to talk a little bit about your school, Mr. Cannon. Yes, ma'am. All right. Um, Mr. Cannon, you will notice very quickly, viewers, is very proud of his school. He loves the South Central Falcons and he loves to tell us about it. Um, so, Mr. Cannon, let's start with some typical questions that parents have on tours, which is often about size. So, can you tell us how many students are there at South Central and about how many students are in a typical classroom um, in a non-COVID year? Definitely in a non-COVID year. Um, of course, even in this year, uh, on the road, we have a little over 1,600 students uh, enrolled here at South Central. And a uh, typical class size could range for anywhere from 20 to maybe 26, 27 on average, all depending on the class um, and all depends on you know the program they're in. All right, thank you. Um, and I wonder if you could tell us about some of the special things that South Central has to offer. You know, we have parents that have been through the elementary school experience when they go to encores once a day, to middle school when they've got two encores a semester and they're going every day. Um, what are the extracurricular activities um, and those encore type experiences look like at South Central? Well, uh, a school our size, we offer a uh, full range of opportunities for students to be in extracurricular activities, as well as other electives. Uh, in terms of the electives, um, in our CT department, which is very large, we have our family consumer science, where we offer foods classes, as well as culinary classes. We actually have a full-fledged culinary kitchen uh, that is rated by the health department that we use for our culinary program. We also have our early childhood development, where our students uh, in this program go out daily well not this year but in a typical year they would go out daily to the daycares for the practicum we also have our health sciences program where we have students that are in our nursing fundamentals class that they also go out to their clinicals uh, we have uh, adobe computer graphic design uh, in our uh, school we have stem we have uh, marketing uh, we have uh, theater dance band uh, JRTC is very popular here at our school uh, obviously, we offer the auto tech. We offer um, our construction programs as well as our art. As Mr. Varney mentioned earlier, we offer the regular um, uh, visual art uh, one and two and three, but we also offer our art through 3D design as well as digital photography and ceramics um, and a full range of AP courses, AP psychology, AP computer science, AP bio and chemistry we rotate on an off and on year, AP environmental earth. We also offer marine biology class, as well as AP, um, the uh, biology health science class. Um, and I'm sure I'm leaving something out, but we, we have a full range of uh, extracurriculars as well, in terms of all the athletics, uh, from football to basketball, to swimming, cross country, track, um, as well as clubs. Uh, we have a full range of clubs, video game club. Um, we have National uh, Honor so Art Society, as well as the National Honor Society. Our yearbook um, classes are actually during the day. So just a full range um, of things for our students. And that's what high schools are designed to do, to provide opportunities for students to get involved and not necessarily, uh, you know, the core classes, but also in their interests outside of those classes. So that's what kind of drives our curriculum, as well as STEM. I, I don't know if I mentioned STEM. We also have STEM. Um, we also have an Apple development class that we have um as I, as I talk i think about more things um but a full range uh, and dance is pretty popular as well um in our school so a full range of opportunities for students to be involved in and outside of school mr cannon every time we talk about your school i feel like the list is never going to stop <laughs> like you go on and on because you have so much to offer there at south central high school yes, it's absolutely incredible to hear about all of the opportunities for students there um, a common question that comes up for parents who are getting ready to send their kids to high school or might be transferring um, from a smaller environment <clears throat> is how does communication change? So again, parents have kind of gotten used to, they don't get the weekly folder in middle school anymore. Things changed from elementary to middle school. 
but I think communication changes even more in high school. So what thoughts do you have about what parents should expect for communication in high school? Well, the communication comes on different levels, initially from the teacher. Um, obviously, they should have the same access with the uh, parent portal in terms of grades um, and emailing, um, prop supports, report cards. Um, but also, um, a lot of our folks use Remind as well. Um, this is not messages, mass emails. Uh, at the school level, we use several things. Um, we use for our weekly, for example, in a typical week, um, we have one assistant principal that sends out mass email through our Blackboard to all of our parents. And then on Sunday, I send out the call, the weekly call, which kind of mirrors the weekly announcements. Um, our media coordinators, Ms. Elkson and Ms. Friday, actually send out through our social media, Facebook, Twitter. Um, and so we push things out that way. But we also have a unique way um, through our South Central podcast that is very unique. I don't know if any of the high schools are using the podcast, um, but we are using a uh, South Central podcast that was um, – set up by Mr. McDay, one of our assistant principals. Um, we started it last year when COVID hit to really push out. Um, our Blackboard was good, but it, we have a new upgrade now that's really good with the email, but at that time it wasn't. And so the podcast was really awesome because we can push it out through Facebook um, as well as um, the, the Blackboard as well. So, um, and we were able to create some dialogue um, maybe, and even add some comedy in it. I think folks look forward to hearing it each week, but we have, varying levels of communication. So I know a lot of folks like email and talking to parents. Some wait for that weekly call faithfully. And so this way we're able to get to everybody. And then of course, a lot of folks have the social media. So we try to ensure that we get to everybody, not just necessarily parents, but our students as well um, to keep them informed. So parents, there is no shortage of opportunities to communicate with South right. Central High School if your student is there. Um, and I always put in the plug from Parents for Public Schools. I really hope that if your child goes to South Central or any other school, that you as a parent will reach out to their teachers at the very beginning of the year and introduce yourself and start that relationship right then from the very first day. Um, last question before we go on the tour, Mr. Cannon. Um, tell us what are some opportunities in a typical year for parents to engage at your school? We have a full range of opportunities. Um, we actually have our academic boosters uh, that we formed uh, about four years ago. Um, it's basically like the PTA. We just call it the boosters, um, but we um, meet we meet monthly. Um, this year hadn't so much because of the COVID, um, but we actually have been in talks and trying to get get meeting again. But typically, we meet, and these are the parents that are just full of support in all of our academic programs, whatever it may be. Um, they want to be involved, even if not here, hands on, but just maybe taking up donations, um, going out in the community. Um, and we often, often every marking period, celebrate our, our students through uh, academic breakfasts. So the parent boosters are totally in charge of that. They get all the, the stuff together. They come, they serve. Um, and when you join this boosters, um, it's only $10 per family. Uh, so we try to make it very, very inexpensive. Um, and um, a lot of parents uh, just want to know about the opportunities. So, you know, I'm a parent myself. I have five children. I can't be at everything. But a lot of the parents in my first year here, five years ago, says, I just want to know what's going on. So when I have time, I know. So when you join our boosters, your name goes on the mailing list. And we send out those communications about all the opportunities. So, hey, if you can't come, maybe send in a donation or donate some items. But if you can't come, come and serve. Um, but it's a way for us to you know, uh, connect with our, our families and, you know, a successful school must have a successful school community partnership. And so um, we wanted to make sure our parents are involved and have the opportunity to be involved. Uh, during our teacher appreciation, our boosters are uh, all in on that and planning that uh, during the summer. Um, we actually started a legacy, a South Central Legacy Award, which is out front, that parents can purchase uh, ceramic tiles um, that are engraved with certain messages. Um, you may have seen that on, on social media. So that's our parent boosters, just trying to get our alumni to be involved. A lot of folks don't realize we're still a young school and our alumni are still in their thirties. And so we're trying to establish that tradition. So the parent boosters is very much a, a big part of that. Mr. Cannon, that actually reminds me of a neat story that I heard this week. We have, um, two organizations who are sponsoring our school tours, Capital to Coast Law Firm and Haystack Realty. 
And Haystack, uh, Katie over there told us that one reason she's sponsoring our tours is because she's from the very first graduating class of South Central High School. Um, so that's that's really exciting to hear. And you're right, it's still still a very young alumni group. Um, well, Mr. Cannon, we are excited to see your school today. So we're going to move on and take a tour of South Central High School. And I believe we're going to start with Ms. Elks in the Media Center. Hello, hey. Ms. Elks. I hope that Hi. you can tell us the great things happening in the Media Center and show us a bit of that great space. Sure. Um, so I'm standing in front of some of the shelves. Um, and a couple of years ago, um, we genrefied our collection. So we operate somewhat more like a bookstore. So um, we have our collection divided into categories where the students can easily find things they're interested in. Um, so we, that, we have seen a big impact from that. Um, we also have um, desktops that sometimes classes come in to use. Um, however, now that everyone has laptops, we don't use these as much unless students need to print. So we offer printing services. Um, we also have a huge amount of space. So oftentimes I advertise the media center as a place for teachers to bring their classes when they wanna spread out and do collaborative activities. Um, and because that's kind of our goal here to help students communicate, collaborate and create. Um, we also try to be very welcoming and um, have a diverse collection um, of books that we're really working on so that students see themselves in the books and all as mirrors and also see um, other ways, um, other lifestyles, other um, you know, countries of origin, um, types of books. Um, we also in normal times have a coffee shop that we call Starbucks that is run completely by our special ed population. Um, and this is to help them um, gain work skills and interpersonal skills. Um, where they serve coffee to the staff here. Unfortunately, we can't serve to students, though I tried. Um, <laughs> we also, you know, like to um, have special guest speakers and different kinds of programming activities in here during nor normal times as well. Um, we're a space that the students come in the morning before classes during regular years. Um, we also this year have started as all Pitt County schools have in issuing devices to every single student um, that needs a device. We have Chromebooks that we check out to them and we support um, them using all of the electronic tools that they use along with their, you know, any troubleshooting that they need help with on their computers. And we do that both virtually and here in person. So we kind of try to offer all the resources that our staff and all of our students might need potentially um, to be successful in all of their classes. And there are two of us, two media coordinators here because we are a large school um, and we um, can cover all of the different areas and make sure that we're helping everyone that needs us. Thank you so much. What an incredible overview of the Media Center and all that it has to offer. Um, those of you who are watching, I hope that at some point you have a chance to go visit the Media Center there at South Central. Um, I could probably spend a whole day in their space. Um, it's it is a fun. beautiful space and we do love to have people come in it. Wonderful. Well, we are going to move on and see some more great spaces there at South Central. And I believe we're going to visit Mrs. Piner in a classroom. Yes, so before I show you the space, um, I'm just gonna give a quick rundown on some of the core classes and electives that we offer here at South Central. Um, specifically here in the social studies department, we have 12 staff members. Um, and within social studies, we have a varied number of classes. Um, we have AP World History, AP US History, AP European History, AP Psychology, so any AP um, we can offer it here at South Central. We also have electives such as history of sports, African-American studies, and a course which I teach on the Holocaust and genocide studies. Um, so again, varied curriculum. Students can sign up for pretty much anything that interests them or that they think they might be interested in. 
Um, and that's just not in social studies. We also have electives, including AP classes and all of our core, as well as in um, our world language department, our art department. So tons of offerings. Um, your student is sure to find something that interests them here in our class uh, selection. So I will show you a little bit about the space. Um, so this is sort of what a normal, you know, classroom would look like, you know, science rooms are a little bit different because they have labs. Um, in a normal, normal school year, we would have two students per table. Most of our classrooms have tables instead of desks. Um, it allows a little bit more for collaboration. Also in a regular school year, most teachers will actually set their tables up in pods to really facilitate discussion and collaboration between students. Um, so classrooms are light, bright, again, you know, we have a really, really great space here at South Central because our building is um, one of the newer ones in the county. So that's uh, the core classrooms here. Thank you so much, Ms. Piner. It's great to have an opportunity to sort of step in that classroom and really see exactly what it might look like. And for those of you watching, I hope you're able to envision your students sitting at one of those tables and collaborating um, and just gaining all those wonderful skills and all of that knowledge that teachers there at South Central have to offer. Um, I believe we are going to travel now to the cafeteria with Assistant Principal, Mr. Baker. Hello, coming to you from the cafeteria here at South Central, the South Central Cafe. Um, our staff, first of all, has just done an amazing job with um, the preparation of food, the setting up of the cafeteria, um, and they, you know, kudos to, to our cafeteria staff. Um, they get our kids in through uh, both lunches. We do have two lunches here um, at South Central, and they are about 30 minutes uh, a piece, but we uh, clear the cafe in about 20 minutes. Uh, that's how efficient they, they are, and uh, getting the kids in and out. They are socially distant, um, and they do sanitize before going into the kitchen area. Um, and our cafeteria is well marked and, and pretty safe. Um, I've got two children of my own that go here. I am a parent here, so I'm a proud uh, Falcon and uh, am glad to be working uh, where my children are learning. All right. Um, I think you answered all the questions, Mr. Baker. I usually ask how long they get for lunch and things like that. And you did a great job. You answered all the questions. Um, thank you for sharing that space with us. Um, I think we are going to move now to the gym with Ms. Jackson, who was, we've already seen, so excited to show us some of the physical education spaces and tell us about the physical education opportunities that are offered there at South Central. So Ms. Jackson, whenever you're ready. Sorry, this phone thing really has me <laughs> strange. Changing classes, so you know, kids are gonna be around. I guess I'm gonna have to put my mask on. Sorry about that, let me put it on. Take a moment for that to happen, safety first. So no worries. Um, I guess I'll just do it out here until I can walk in there because kids are walking everywhere and that way they won't be in the video. Um, here at South Central, we have four different physical education classes that you can participate in. We have ninth grade um, physical education and health. And when you're in ninth grade, you'll come in and you'll alternate between doing physical education activities and going into the classroom and learning about health. You have to have that class to graduate. So hopefully everybody does that their freshman year. After that, we have an advanced PE class where you will go into the big gym and you will be in there just doing physical activities. You don't have to worry about doing any health work then. We also have weightlifting and in the weightlifting class, obviously you're lifting weights and hopefully you can get that nice sculpted six pack that you know everybody always wants. And the last adaptive um, and the last um, physical education program that we have is the adaptive PE program. And that's my program that I've started here. And what it is, is it's a class where uh, the regular students sign up and we create lessons for our special education students here. And we go to the classroom, we get those special education students and we take them outside and we participate in those activities with them. And we build and form relationships with them. And we try to make them like, it, like it's more of an inclusive um, school here at South Central High School. 
I'm gonna try to walk into the gym. Hopefully everybody is gone. That way you can see this awesome big gym that we have here. And this is where all the magic happens with basketball and volleyball. It is an amazing gym. Not that, you know, football or anything else doesn't have it, but you know, this is the gym. All right, thank you so much, Ms. Jackson. It is amazing to learn how many opportunities there are for mm -hmm. physical education and sports. Um, there's just a lot going on there at South Central. So we were so glad to see that space and hear from you. Um, I think we're gonna travel now to, like I said, one of my favorite spaces. Um, I always love seeing the art areas there at South Central. So Mr. Varney, tell us all about what's offered in terms of art education. So in art education, we have uh, a very large facility. We have three teachers, so that's three rooms. And plus the room I'm in, um, we offer 3D technology. So I have a larger room. It's actually a room and a half. And the other room shows you, uh, has all the equipment in it. So I'm going to flip screens here so you can, so I'm going to kind of do a, a whirlwind tour. Um, this is my first space. I call this the clean side. Um, this is all where I, my upper level students work. We have vinyl cutting. Um, these little cubbies are what I put my AP students in. They get their own studio space so they can really rank the good stuff. Um, these are vinyl cutters. We have one, two, three vinyl cutters. Um, so I'm trying not to make you guys sick moving around. This is kind of my stuff. Um, and moving back across, we're gonna move into the other room where we have this upper level storage. These are all the courses we offer. I keep them posted so the students can know. The yellow is our, our one, two, three, and four. Orange is all ceramics. This so way, we have four ceramics classes. These are our two specialty ones, photography, digital photography, and art 3D. And these are the three AP studio classes we offer. And so moving through here, this is the larger space. And this has all the stuff we need. I'm trying not to move too fast. We have a large area in the middle. We've got our sinks with all our paint. We've got our tools, uh, bandsaws. I was a sculpture major, so I'm big into making stuff with wood. Uh, and I like the kids to do it. Drill press, table saw. We've got a hot wire foam cutter. Kids working on a project right here. This is where the wire gets hot and you kind of cut the foam through it. And once they see that, everybody wants to make something out of that. Um, Moving through here, we have our CNC machine, which is my personal favorite. And if you don't know what a CNC machine is, it does stuff like this right here. It kind of cuts, move under. it cuts in these pockets and it cuts all, all these funky little shapes. Um, this is a project we're working on for somebody, but the cutter head right here, it spins and moves around. And it goes over and it goes up. So it can cut all kinds of stuff out and it's, it's Big as a sheet of plywood, so it's five by nine. And that's where we do the bulk of our work. We do all the stuff for the teacher of the year. And that's some of the styrofoam parts. They're gonna be the backdrops for the teacher of the year. And there's some other miscellaneous plywood because that's what this thing runs on. And then in here is our laser cutter. It's right back here. This is our storage room. This is our tool wall. And in the laser cutter right here, this is my other favorite one. It does all kinds of stuff from 3D shapes. These are all cut in 2D and you see the dark edges, they're burned. I've got the rubber bands on to kind of hold it. And then it'll raster, and that's a picture of me, and this is my demo one. Um, it'll do glass, a piece of glass right here, if you can pick it up. You can see that it'll etch glass. And those tiles Mr. Cannon was referring to for the Booster Club, we do all those tiles in here, right in-house. And so we just laser cut them. And this is the easiest one for the kids to learn. They love it. I'm a big promoter of having all the kids know how to use all the tools. Um, some have a bigger learning curve than others, but they enjoy it. And it's my goal to give them a taste of, what we, of what's offered. Um, not that they're going to be professionals when they leave here, but they'll get excited about something or a tool or a material and then pursue it further down, either at Pitt or at college or anywhere else. We also have, I just forgot, we have welding and it's not Welding, welding, it's, I call it art school welding. We have two welders here and I teach the kids how to weld, but I teach them how to make art with welding, not necessarily functional or structural. It's just kind of for art and they love it. A lot of kids love the, love the welding and I do too. So that's what some of the stuff, we have ceramics down the hall, that's in a whole nother room. And then the digital photography is also in the room next door. We have lots of cameras and all the stuff you need.
Thank you so much, Mr. Varney. I'm always blown away with the, the multitude of opportunities that students have there at South Central, from hearing about the AP classes from Ms. Piner, to the physical education classes from Ms. Jackson, to these art classes from you. There's so many opportunities. Um, and we have one more opportunity that we're going to learn about. So we're going to travel to see Mr. Culver over in the auto body shop. So tell us about your space and what you do there, Mr. Culver. Sure. I teach the students about automotive uh, repair. Uh, I don't per se teach auto body. I teach auto mechanics, which is a little different. Uh, we do more on the lines of uh, mechanical uh, repairs, brakes, stuff like that. And I can take freshmen all the way up to make this the concentrator, which means that they can uh, leave here and have a credits for an associate's degree uh, if they follow the right pathway. Also, I found out that my tech two and three is going to go to inherently honors, which means that it's a more rigorous course. It's about like advanced um, honors in math or science or something like that. And that's gonna be new for next year. And I am going to give you a little tour of the shop and I'm going to talk while I do that if I can do this. All right, you caught me. This is uh, the front of the shop area that I've set up for COVID learning. Um, I have them distance uh, six feet apart and they have their own space, wiped down in between classes and um, that's the hallway entrance door and we've got the safety requirements, the shower and the eye wash. Now you caught me with something rare, is this bench is generally totally empty, but I'm doing tool inventory right now. And this just gives you an ideal, a small ideal of the tools that we have to work with here at South Central. We, um, have ample amount of space, tools, equipment, diagnostic equipment, uh, toolboxes. Now this is the back part, uh, back corner of the shop. And we have all of the equipment for basic um, lifting the cars, jacks, uh, pulling an engine out, engine crane. And I also have demonstration engines that I use for demo that they can take apart with very little effort. They're uh, cleaned, they have a few screws in them and they can actually take them apart all the way down to the bare block and put them back together. The students really love to do that. This is in preparation for another one. This is a Honda Civic engine I have apart that I'm gonna do the same thing as over here. Back in this corner, we have our hydraulic presses. Uh, the um, bench grinder that is on a stand. This is the exhaust uh, box in the machine. This is the back door. I wanted to pan real quick without making anybody sick, but the orange, this is the biggest question I get most of the time is, what is those orange things hanging from the ceiling? Well, that is part of the exhaust system that we put in use whenever a car is in the shop and we have to do diagnostics. It goes on the tailpipe of the car because of carbon monoxide, we pump those fumes outdoors. So as you can see, we take safety very big here. Now, this is the shop door. I can fit real tall. Uh, cars in here. This is shared with Mr. Varney. Uh, this is the area he was mentioning about teaching students to weld for art. And we put it here and I use it also. 
Uh, moving on to safety, the hazard storage cabinets where flammables and all chemicals go. Now we're getting to the equipment to do brakes, to balance tires, to change tires, take them off the rim, put them on the rims. And I am moving that is to wash parts off. This is my storage area for overflow that I have. And I will show you the tool room that I also have. This is uh, a nice device that I put uh, the eyeglasses in that I issue the students the safety glasses. And with ultraviolet light, it kills the germs so we can reuse those and not have to buy new ones every semester. That's very nice. And this is just special tools and stuff that we need uh, to teach. So I'm not lacking in anything as far as tools and equipment to teach the curriculum that I need. And um, last but not least, the uh, four post lift, which also turns into an alignment rack to adjust the wheels so the tires will not wear. This is actually a car that my upper level just done brakes on and it's done getting ready to pull it out. And this is the two post lift. And that is to uh, do any kind of repairs necessary that we see fit. Um, and that takes us back full circle. So any questions you can ask me, but I've just about covered just about everything. Back to me. It is, it is so obvious that you love what you're doing, Mr. Culver, and I bet those students gain so much knowledge and experience from you. Thank you for being with us today. Thank you. My pleasure. All right, we are going to head back to Mr. Cannon, principal there at South Central High School. Mr. Cannon, this was such a great tour of your school. Thank you for sharing your space with us today. We are certainly excited about sharing uh, all we have to offer at South Central. Um, one question that I wanted to ask you, Mr. Cannon, that I thought of while we were going through the tour, we heard the bells several times. Um, and I think a lot of parents often are wondering how much time students get between classes. And they always wonder, are my students going to get lost? So can you tell us a little bit about what you're doing there to take care of students in terms of class changes and making sure they don't get lost? Yes, ma'am, certainly. So students have five minutes in between each class. So a bell, a long bell, which you heard in the video, will ring to end, for example, end first period. When the students have three uh, minutes left to go before the tardy bell rings, you'll hear a ding, ding, ding. So that is a warning bell uh, to let students know, oh, I have three minutes to get to class. So let me, let me hurry along. Uh, in terms of getting lost, uh, we, we try to do a thorough job of uh, providing our freshmen, especially. We do have the, the link crew um, events that we have that they come during the summer and they take a tour, which kind of familiarizes them with the building. But we also have school maps as well as um, the schools are rectangles. So we always say, just keep making left turns and you won't get lost. So the way the, the hall series is set up, you know, it's 100 and 600 run parallel. And then the, there's a ladder, 200, 300, 400, 500 are the ladder rung. So um, we kind of use that um, analogy to, to help get around. But after about a week or so, everybody kind of figures their way. So. Now you mentioned something that I absolutely love about our high schools here in Pitt County. You mentioned Link Crew. Um, tell us what Link Crew is and how that's really beneficial to students who are new to the high school experience. So the Link Crew program um, has been developed to help students get acclimated uh, to transition to high school, especially one as large as our school. And so what they do is they offer students the opportunity to come um, in August. Um, and they basically um, are exposed to the school in a way that is fun. So they're having fun while they're also learning. We do have link crew members that are students that go through training 
Um, we do have um, uh, adults that uh, partner uh, together and they advise these uh, students and they train them and they get the students registered and signed in and they give them tours and they feed them a good Chick-fil-A lunch and they dance and they play good music. And the students are all, you know, at the end of the day, they've had fun, but they've also had a chance to learn the building, see some faces that they may be familiar with by the time they start. So it kind of alleviates the stress of first day. I have never been in this building. Um, so they'll get link crew, open house, and then first day we'll have folks showing them around as well. So between those, those levels, um, it seems to work out in terms of uh, learning the school. All right, well, Mr. Cannon, I think that after watching this video, you're going to have some parents sending their students there to South Central after they've seen all that you have to offer there. Um, those of you watching, if you have questions about South Central High School, I know Mr. Cannon would be more than happy to talk with you if you reach out to him. You can also reach out to us at Parents for Public Schools, and we're always happy to connect you with school staff and make that introduction over email. Um, thank you to South Central High School. Thank you to those who are watching and have a great day, everybody. Thank you, Ms. Dibble.